when I enter a new classroom, my first thought is not about the lesson topic of the day. It is about where I can hide and what seat I will be safest in. This morning, safety is on the minds of a lot of San Diegans in light of the recent mass shootings nationwide. Thanks for joining us at 6 a.m. I'm Chris Groh in for Eric Connor. And I'm Netta Irampur. Glad you're here with us today. Local leaders considering a number of actions to try and stop the gun violence. CBS 8's Dana Marie McNichol joining us live outside the county administration building with what we can expect to happen here locally. Good morning, Dana Marie. Good morning, Chris and Netta. That's right. The topic of gun violence and how to keep keep students safe in our schools is going to be top of mind at the County Board of Supervisors meeting starting at 9 a.m. Now they're voting on something that is new and could be very impactful. They're looking to vote on the opportunity to sue gun manufacturers based on gun violence, holding them accountable. Now, yesterday at a press conference, we heard from local students speaking about how this proposal could really help end the violence. What disturbs me most for me and my peers is this money and profit in the gun industry gets prioritized by lawmakers over protecting children's lives. This has created a culture where we as young people have to live under the anxiety of gun violence that is always looming around the corner. The influence that gun manufacturers hold over the adult lawmakers who have sworn to protect us is harmful and shameful. Now that was Lucy Young, an 11th grader at Canyon Crest Academy, who says too many of her peers spend years worrying about gun violence in their school, adding that firearms are the leading cause of death among children and teens. Now Chair Nathan Fletcher said yesterday at the same press conference that he wants to use this policy to put pressure on manufacturers that to be responsible corporate citizens because they shouldn't be allowed to rake in money and then sit idly as people use their product to perform mass shootings. Now, it does appear to be similar to a bill supported by Governor Newsom that would allow citizens to sue manufacturers, distributors, and sellers. Now, another topic of today's meeting will include ways to keep students safer on the county campuses. Again, that meeting is happening at 9 a.m. We will keep you updated on how the County Board of Supervisors does vote, what they discuss, as this could uh, really impact the future of our schools and the gun manufacturers here in San Diego. So we'll uh, continue this coverage on later editions of CBS 8 News as well on CBS 8.com. I'm Dana Marie McNichol coming to you live from downtown San Diego. Thank you, Dana Marie. And this morning, we're getting a look at a new explosive fire near the border. SDG&E cameras in the area captured this. It, you can see right there, flames broke out yesterday afternoon and grew to nearly 600 acres within hours. Crews rescued five people. Two went to a hospital, but we don't know their conditions right now. Cal Fire says the fire is 10% contained and not threatening any buildings. This morning, three Marine officers and two Navy officers are under censure. This is regarding that fatal ocean training accident. These officers were in leadership roles when the amphibious assault vehicle sank right near San Clemente Island back in the year 2020. Nine service members were killed in that terrible accident. The Navy sent letters to the officers saying they showed, quote, inadequate leadership and execution of the oversight duties. A report following an investigation claimed poor maintenance of those AAVs and training errors played large roles in what happened there. A man is in jail this morning accused of impersonating a deputy. And take a look at what investigators found after they arrested 21 year old Michael Carmichael in Fallbrook yesterday morning. Authorities say a real deputy stopped to help who he thought was a plain clothes deputy making a traffic stop. Officials then say Carmichael got into his car, drove away and crashed. Deputies say the woman he pulled over is doing OK. This morning, Castle Park High School students in Chula Vista, they're continuing their fight to try to upgrade their campus. They spoke out during last night's school board list meeting. We have termites in the library, mold in the windowsills. It goes from stained bathrooms, trough urinals. When was the last time you guys used trough urinals? Do your bathrooms have cracked windows and stalls that can't lock? Try going to, bath try going to the bathroom at my school. You can hear the frustration from these students. The issue was not on the board's agenda last night, so they did not take a vote, but officials did tell many families and students who were there that they hear their concerns. The board will meet again in two weeks to adopt a new budget. 
In this morning, we are hearing reaction from former President Trump after the second day of hearings into the January 6th insurrection. In a statement, Trump called the House committee investigating the assault a, quote, kangaroo court hoping to distract the American people. Yesterday, the committee tried to unravel Trump's claims of winning the 2020 election. In a recorded interview, former Attorney General Bill Barr recalled the president showing him a report alleging voting machines were rigged. I thought, boy, if he really believes this stuff, he has, you know, lost contact with, uh, with uh, he, he's become detached from reality. Up until the, morning. the next hearing is tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. You can watch it right here on CBS 8. And this morning, the FDA is beginning the first of two days of meetings to discuss COVID-19 vaccines for Moderna and Pfizer for kids. Today, the agency will be deciding if it will recommend Moderna to kids between 6 and 17 years old. Tomorrow, they will consider both companies shots for kids between 6 months and 5 years old. And now this morning, the price of gas around town, it's trending up once again. The average cost for a gallon, 637. It increased seven tenths of a cent overnight. Just one day after that 17 day streak of increases ended. So it went down a little bit for one day and it's back to this. Now this morning, there are new fears of a recession after a miserable start to the week that was on Wall Street. All major indexes are facing deep declines with the S&P 500 tumbling into a bear market now. Naomi Rockham explains what this means for you. A bitter day on Wall Street has Americans worrying about their retirement funds, along with everyday expenses. We're confined, you know, we're just kind of being kind of like kept prisoners in our own our own little spaces because we can't afford to do anything. Stocks plunged Monday across the board over concerns about inflation and higher interest rates. The S&P 500 dropped 151 points, down more than 20 percent from January highs, firmly landing in the claws of a bear market for the first time since the start of the pandemic. I think there was this fear that, in fact, higher prices and rising interest rates are going to keep eating into corporate profits and the consumers are not going to be able to maintain their current level of spending. Tech companies like Amazon and Apple pulled the Nasdaq into deeper declines. The crypto market crashed too, wiping out billions of dollars. Investors are closely watching the Federal Reserve, which is meeting this week to discuss raising interest rates at least half a percentage point. The problem is that the Fed was laden with fighting inflation. And, and now um, they're, they're kind of scrambling. For those anxious about their 401ks, experts say riding out a downturn may prove a stronger strategy than selling off. You shouldn't just blow out of your stock positions just because what's happening today or tomorrow, even in six months. Most people who are investors are investing for the long term. But be patient. Bear markets can take two years or longer to break even. Naomi Ruckham, CBS News. Also, this just coming in here, producer prices increased 10.8% in the month of May compared to a year before. The producer price index, that's the one that measures inflation before it reaches consumers. We will have a check on the market coming up in today's Your Money Report. It'll be around 624. All right, let's switch it up and bring some some light, some some warmth. <laughs> I will say, I mean, that marine layer is peeling back a lot quicker Already? than uh, yesterday. Already, I know. We looked at it from Mount Soledad, and those clouds are starting to break apart in a couple spots. This doesn't mean that we're going to be left with sunshine across the board for the rest of the day, but what it does mean is that a couple spots along the coast may see some of the sun peeking through, at least for a bit of the morning. Those clouds always have the capacity to regain some momentum in the next couple hours, and what we are expecting is that coastal clouds will pervade along your inland valleys, your mountains, your deserts, plenty of sunshine in the mix. Coastline should see some sunshine at times, but patchy cloud cover is going to be uh, the constant theme for this week. It's 609 right now on the clock. Live look outside shows what it looks like above those clouds. 540 was the sunrise. That was about a half hour ago. Sunset comes at 758 closer to 8 p.m. Temperatures are warming up across the board, but it's going to be most felt across your mountains and deserts where we warm 
to 83 this afternoon, 105 for the deserts. These temperatures are at least about five, maybe even closer to 10 degrees warmer than where we were yesterday afternoon. Coastline staying with upper 60s and low 70s, a little bit warmer for your inland valleys. Overnight lows are not causing much trouble. Very, very mild outside upper 50s and mostly low 60s. 61 right now in Poway, 66 in Oceanside. That's pretty warm for uh, Oceanside to start off the morning. 63 in San Diego and uh, 62 at Mount Laguna, so not a ton of trouble. Coolest change, so the biggest departure from where we were yesterday comes from Borrego Springs. 18 degrees cooler right now than 24 hours ago. 17 degrees cooler in Ocotillo Wells. Besides that, along the coast and inland, we're nearly identical to where we were yesterday. Let's talk about what's going on in traffic this morning. Want to take you to one thing that uh, we want to let you know about. This is construction that's going to be taking place. Uh, Caltrans is going to be installing uh, protection for wrong way drivers and try to prevent that. So they're, while they install that uh, at the U.S. Mexico border, the southbound 5 and 805 last USA exit ramps are going to be closed during uh, the daytime hours of 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. So coming up in about uh, 50 minutes or so, they're going to close that last exit before the border. It means that if you want to stay in the U.S., you don't want to cross into Mexico, you're going to have to get off on the San Ysidro Boulevard exit. So important to recognize that both the southbound and southbound 5 and 805 are going to run into that difficulty. Uh, could cause some congestion today and tomorrow uh, in that San Ysidro area closer to the border. Now, something's back to you.